Hi, my name is Jacqueline Price and welcome to Shadowbox. Good to see you. How have you been? Uh, not too bad, just working whenever I can. Uh, getting the graft in whenever I can, you know, as much as possible. So, we're all right. So, you've been ticking over, though, in the, um, the lockdown period, though, keeping yourself ready? 100%. We have to, have to take over, regardless of lockdown or no lockdown. You've got to just mm-hmm. burn and improve. And... Can I ask you something, Craig? Like, so, it's not, uh, it's, it's not a secret that... You've struggled to get back to it, so we'll come on to that in a minute. But for you to wake up in the morning and go, okay, I've got nothing in front of me, I've got no fight to do, how do you keep motivated? How does Chris Congo keep motivated? Um, the way I see it as is just the end goal, really. I just got to know what the end goal is and just continue working and knowing that set- setbacks are going to happen. And, um, yeah, just got to keep going and moving forward with everything. So that's what keeps me going and just knowing where I'm going to get to, you know. Yeah. I have to say, Chris, um, first of all, let's talk about this up-and-coming fight against Luther Clay. Is that for the WBO Global World Yeah, it is. It's still for the WBO Global title. Um should be the third week into uh, into Eddie Hearn's fight camp. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it should be good. So it's definitely going ahead. Definitely, hundred percent. Nice. I have to say, Chris, um, so I, to the viewers that um, I, I've known Chris for a long time from the amateurs, so I'm personally really pleased to see you making moves because I'll be honest, I feel like I don't take this the wrong way. I feel like you've been on the outside with your nose pressed up against the glass, watching everybody else make moves, and you haven't had your chance. Do you now think because you're with um, Dillian, Dillian's managing the career, do you think that's the, 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 the final push for you? Uh, 100%. Um, the reason why I say that is because as soon as I signed with him, the week after I had the fight with Luther Clay, so... Already, that was a big move for me. And obviously, secondly, I was able to get a fight within a week. So I knew that that was the place I needed to be. That's the mm. person I needed to be with. Mm. So I'm going to ask, he's known you for years. Mm-hmm. What do you can tell him? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's, that's a question you can ask him, you know. I, I will. <laughs> yeah. but it's good. It's good that... Um, Seeing someone of your potential um, mm-hmm. now finally getting your, uh, you know, getting your money to shine. So you've had a little bit of beef going with uh, over the uh, over social media. Um, it's never been any beef. It's just been, it's just been a thing where he hasn't been professional and he knows that, and he is really and truly getting angry at the fact that mm-hmm. I'm stating the facts. So if you're calling yourself a professional, you're telling me you haven't run in five weeks. Mm. What kind of professional are you, you know? So for me, mm. I'm already that I'm ahead of the game. And he's got some catching up to do. And I tr- trust me, the way I work is he ain't catching up to me. So he's already lost the fight before he got in there, you know? To even take the fight now, um, it's... It's, it's not going to do anything for him, to be honest. He's a, he, I just know already that he's already lost, regardless of what he tries to bring. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just ready for it now, man. I, I don't need much. I don't need long. You know, for me, July was a perfect date for me. Mm-hmm. July was literally for me to just get down in weight, do a few, a few weeks of sparring, and I was good. For him, he needed he needs the eight to ten week camp because he hasn't been training. Like he said, he said he hasn't been doing nothing for the whole five six weeks of um, of lockdown. So he's yeah. telling me he hasn't done not even one run because that's that's terrible. You know? So can you 
prove that he wouldn't want to take the fight if he's not ready. Hundred percent, because he knows he knows that um, I'm probably he knows that I'm probably one of the best walkers in the division. Regardless of what the rankings say, if you look mm. at, it, let's be honest, who's really gonna take a fight with me, six foot, big, strong at the way? Who's mm. gonna want that? You know, and he already yeah. said in an interview, I was one of the welterweights. He didn't want to fight. There was three oh, names. Okay. There was three names. There was me. There was Josh Kelly, and I can't remember who else. But I know it don't matter who else is there. I know my name was there. Mm. So. At the end of the day, it was another good opportunity for him because Dillian got me on the Josh on the Josh Kelly undercard. We just needed an opponent, so he was the one of the ones that you know we we approached. Well, I don't think we approached him. I think Eddie approached him first because yeah. I think he got he got the call before us. So he's saying he found out about the fight when it was in December or whatever, right? So we signed with Dillian. If people don't know, I actually signed with Dillian in December. Right. So obviously we bring it out January because obviously it's a new year, so it makes it look a bit more bigger, you know? It's, it's, it's good. It's more news for people. So we signed with yeah. Dillian in December. He knew in December that was the fight he was going to find out. He was going to fight. I knew in January. Yeah. So... So are you effectively saying he had no excuses? He's had no excuses. He knew before me. Um, when the lockdown happened, his manager should have should have told him that you need to keep taking over because the fight is still going to happen. But no, his manager thought to look elsewhere because he knows that it's a big ask. So um, yeah, I think they, I think after after once the lockdown happened. I think that was their way out to try and get out of the fight. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm sure... Well, I know behind the scenes what's happened. Um, Eddie Hearn has pushed them to take the fight. They've already said they was going to fight anyway. So yeah. why can't back out? And it's not good for business, is it? Let's be honest. If you say you're going to fight someone, you're going to fight them, you know? You can't say you're going to fight them and then say, oh... Um, I think we're looking elsewhere now. We don't really want to fight. Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd say it out loud anyway. Um, because if you signed something, I would have thought that's... Yeah. And and the, the other thing that I was going to say to you, Chris, is, you know, on the flip side, I have mm -hmm. heard other people say, you know, why isn't he ready? Why wasn't he training throughout the lockdown? Because mm -hmm. everybody else has been uh, training. So I'm just... Yeah. Of course, of course. I mean, what can we do, man? What can we do? Yeah. But I think it's, well, it is. It's two years since I've last seen you box, right? I think I saw the last two bouts that you had at the York Hall. Yeah. And that was in 2018. When I first started doing this, mm -hmm. and then um, obviously you boxed last year, is it uh, Valencia? Yeah, yeah. You I boxed, boxed him in March. Yeah, I missed that one. But, yeah, so uh, two years ago, I've been like, I don't understand why this kid has not taken the welterweight scene by storm. Well, I mean, it, it's sometimes as well, it's timing, you know. Maybe it just wasn't my time. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's, like, literally going to be right after, after this virus is gone. So you never know. Mm. You never know. Mm. I'm glad that you've still got that positive attitude and you've still been putting in the work and may I say uh, now all the rest of the media is caught up Chris just like to say I was one of the first just saying oh, of course. <laughs> good to be. Yeah. just saying I know prospects <laughs> when I see one <laughs> uh, that's good so um talking about the whole Dillian White thing you know mm -hmm. is, it, is it good to be in business with a friend or is it working out all right so far. It's, it's working out great. Um, obviously, before you go into business with someone, you want to know, and you obviously, you obviously have meetings, and you know they understand the business side of things, and you tell them what you're after. And if you can do that, if you can do that, then yeah, we're all good to go. You know, so he already knows that. I don't want these other fights. 
I just want title fights. I want the big fights. And he said, yeah, I can get that for you. So um, let's go. And yeah, boom. We just ended up, you know, signing. I ended up signing with him. And it's all good now. You know what I mean? To be fair, even though you've had so little fights, don't even know if that was proper English, but anyway, yeah. you, you already, when you were fighting certain journeymen, you were way, way above them anyway. So... It's Thank quite you. right. People think like, oh, why is he demanding big fights? Because <laughs> he can, because you're yeah. able to. And I of think course. now it's a, it's a case of like, you don't need to do the sort of working up to it, mm-hmm. do you really? No, I don't need to. I mean, I've done enough of that in the amateurs. I fought a lot of top amateur guys. So, um, yeah, let's just get on with it, man. I want the titles. Yeah, yeah. You know? And equally, so Johnny Garton's now left, uh, he's retired. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Chris Jenkins, I don't, I haven't heard if he's got a new opponent. I'm guessing it would be Conor Ben. Firstly, yeah. if those two meet, who wins? Uh, and who would you like out of it, to be fair? Uh, to be Maybe honest, I want, I, want, I want any of them. Uh, I don't care who wins. Mm-hmm. Whoever's got the title, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a good... It's a big step up for Conor Ben. He hasn't mm-hmm. really fought anyone that's as good as, you know, Chris Jenkins. Same with me. I ain't fought no one as good as Luther Clay to fight Athens, but mm-hmm. that's a fight I'm willing to take because I know I, I know I'm beating him regardless. Uh mm-hmm. with Conor Ben, even even when he boxed um what's this guy's name? The French guy. He boxed a French guy, he was supposed to Get him out of there. I'm talking about Conor Ben. You're talking about Ben. Yes, I know which fight you mean. I know exactly which fight you mean. Yeah. Yeah, he he struggled with him, you know. And even the second fight, it wasn't even a convincing win. So Mm -hmm. it was a close fight. So if you're struggling with a journeyman, how are you going to get on when you're fighting a British champion, someone at that level? Are you going in there just for the money or are you just going in there for the risk? What is it? You know, what mm. can we do? What do you have to bring to the table to beat a guy like Chris Jenkins? But for me, I don't know. You never know. Um, uh, with with the Jenkins fight, he boxed smart against Johnny Garton. And yeah. I would like to say Johnny Garton is a come forward and he's a strong fighter, but he's very smart as well. So mm-hmm. can Conor Ben do a better job than Johnny Garton? I don't know. We just have to see. So I don't yeah. think I'm putting... I'm pointing my finger at a certain fighter to win. I don't care who. I yeah. don't mind fighting either of them. So yeah. What's interesting now? Um, we've been saying it, you know, to a lot of people that I've been discussing behind the closed doors boxing. Mm-hmm. Um, great that we've got boxing back. Not so great that you might not be able to get sparring partners from abroad, etc. However, for someone like you, this mm-hmm. is almost like the perfect time. Because those 50-50 fights are going to be coming thick and fast, are they not? 100%. And that's what I've always wanted anyway. So mm. I don't need uh, the, them fights where it's just going to be easy. And I know, you know, I need the guys that's got their titles and that's willing to come and fight. Because mm. mm. you know? I don't think... You've showed a great account of yourself. Don't get me wrong, Chris, mm-hmm. right? But I don't think you've shown an ounce of what you can do. And I think now about the time that you go, okay, I've got to show a little bit more in my, I've got so many tricks in my my kit bag, Mm -hmm. but I've not been able to show them. Do you know what I mean? 100%. And I think this is the time for me to show it now. So um, no one's really seen me fight a good, credible opponent. So when Luther Clay's name come in, Mm. He's done well. He's been thrown into the deep end. He's boxed away. He's come back to London, boxed Freddie Kewitt. So he's done. He's beat some good guys, you know. And they're the mm-hmm. guys that I want to face. So when I beat them, shows the level of class where I am. So, yeah. So the argument has been, he's, uh, you know, he's, number, was he, he's ranked number 11. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's got a title. Um, and almost how do you think you can beat him when he's allegedly a step above you? To those people, what would you like to say, Chris? For those people that 
let's say they don't know your amateur pedigree, they can argue so what it's amateur, whatever. But for those people that that don't know boxing, yeah, what would you say to them about that fight against Clay? And where um, you think you're at? I mean that fight, like I said, every for me, everyone has to have that one fight, you know, where they're 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 going to fight a person like Clay, especially a person like me. Regardless of how much amateur fighters I've had, they don't matter. Yeah. But everyone needs that one fight that's gonna get yeah. them there. So for me is um I know there's gonna be times where we uh, as fighters, we have to take opportunities that's there, regardless of a big risk, small, big or small. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's why I need I need that fight there, just because of the opportunity, yeah. you know. And it like like Eddie Hearn said, the fight, whichever which whoever wins, which I know is going to be me, it's going to turn out to be you know a big TV fight, so a big yeah. star, a big TV fight. So there you go. That's the risk we're both willing to take. Yeah, it is the breakout fight for both of you, really, isn't it? Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, I've spoken to a few people, and, and they've kind of got had mixed reactions about your, uh, not just yours, yours and Luther's uh, press sort of days. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, they feel like you've had the edge, and. I, I, you know, I don't know how you feel about that. Do you see any chinks in the armour? Have you had a look back at the footage? You know, what do you think? Um, I believe so. But also, like I said, a lot of the time I'm stating the facts. I'm not lying about anything, mm. you know. And some, like I said to him, the truth hurts him. The truth does hurt a lot. 90% of the time, the truth hurts. And that's just facts. And everybody knows you're a professional fighter. You ain't been training for five weeks. You've been at home doing nothing. Mm. If you see him in the interview, look at his face. You can tell his face, his cheeks have swollen up. All he's been doing is chilling and eating. For me, I've been out there. I've been, I've, been doing, I've been doing what I need to do. Yeah. Getting on the road finding a way to train, finding a way to do something. There's always a way. You can always, regardless. Even if I had to travel for two hours every day to go and train somewhere where there's a bag, I would do it. People already know me, you know. Mm -hmm. when, I was studying at, when I was studying at university, I was at Middlesex. I lived up there. But mm -hmm. I was still always find my way down to the limb which took me mm -hmm. about an hour, an hour and 10 minutes every day. So I didn't mm -hmm. care about how long the travel was. All I cared was get into the gym. That's all I cared about. But anyone that knows you knows that you are quietly ambitious. You're not, very, mm -hmm. you're not loud, you know, you're not showy off -y, but you, I think people underestimate you because you're not somebody that's all over social media all the time, talking, talking. And, and don't get me wrong, I think there are different personalities. Some people that suits, and for you it doesn't. It's not you, is it? But no. people should not really underestimate you, should they? No, hell no. And um, he's going to see this fight. If he underestimated me by sitting down for five weeks and not doing one training session, he's got another thing coming. So the news about... I feel for Dillian. So the news that Dillian White is... Uh, mm -hmm. Now taking, uh, uh, well, obviously he's not been able to get his shot against uh, Tyson Fury. Then um, Fury's supposed to be fighting Joshua. They've signed a two-fight deal. Dillian's had mm -hmm. enough. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts thoughts on that? Um, him taking a WBC Yeah, I mean, he's right. He's got every reason to, you know. Because if Fury and Joshua are looking to have a fight after 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 Wilder has a fight with Fury, then it's pretty obvious that they're forgetting about Dillian. They're forgetting about the work he's put in for years. They're forgetting about he hasn't lost since the Joshua fight, and that was at British level. And he mm -hmm. come, he bounced back. He won the British, then moved on. So look at the work he's put in. Let's be honest. 
Mm. And if the, if anyone was in Dillian's shoes, they would do the same thing. Yeah. Because you just can't keep mugging the guy. It's it's a living. You know, it's you're taking the piss, man. So he's got every right to do what he has to do and take them take 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 legal action, you know? So I do mm. feel for him too. With that in mind, though, and I, and, I, and I don't disagree with what he's doing at all, with mm. that in mind, do you then think that he might get, let's say, penalised in a sense? Because he's already been held back and now he's standing up for himself and he's saying no more. Mm-hmm. How do you think that's going to now play out? Because do you know that sometimes when people stand up for themselves, it can go the wrong way? Um, I mean, <clears throat> he's just got to do what's right. Mm. He's got to do what's right for himself. He's got to do what he's got to do. He's got to do what he can go to sleep and live with. You know, for him, mm. if he don't stand down. If he, if he stands down from the situation, mm. you never know. You might you might not be able to sleep at night because that's mm. that's what his end goal is. That his end goal is to become a recognized world champion. You know. And he's not going to take any more bullshit. So mm. I feel like he has to do that. Everyone keeps asking the same question. When you look on social media, you watch, you know, the interviews, you can see the frustration. There's interview after interview of him saying, I, I want my shot. Maybe I'm missing something. Why? Why is he not being given a shot? I mean, we don't well, What do you think? I mean, yeah. I don't know. If I had the answers, I would say, and I would say, this is why I think, but yeah. he's done everything in his power to get to where he's got to. He's beat everybody that's been in front of him except Joshua, and he wants yeah. that rematch also. So, for me, I don't know why. We don't know mm-hmm. why. Only only the WBC, only they know. They confirmed yeah. and said, yeah, 100% that by February 2021, you're going to be mandatory. He sat back, he said, okay, no problem. Yes. And then now, the Joshua fight has come with Fury. So, we don't know why, and we would love to find out why. I mean, don't get me wrong, people were excited for that um, that Joshua and Fury fight, but equally, there are people that would love to see Fury and Dillian fight. So, yeah, it's it's... It's all a bit strange, isn't it? All a bit strange. Of course, very strange. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, back to you. What's the date then that we're thinking of? And is it going to be in London, please, God? Your Um, fight. We're hoping it will be. Like I said, uh, Eddie Hearn's got it all in his back garden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's looking like August the 8th. I would like it sooner, to be honest, but it's not going to happen. Luther won't be ready. So, um, yeah, it's looking like August the 8th. I can only yeah. get a confirmed, confirmed date once we get the call from Eddie or once we get the call from someone from Matron. Do you feel, Chris, now, having been mm-hmm. through what you've been through, do you secretly feel in your bones the tide is turning for you? 100%. I mean, it's only a matter of time. It can't go on for this long for nothing to happen. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've been putting the work in. Yeah. And all I've been doing is waiting for the opportunity to come. Now it's here. I must show the people why. You yeah. Know, I must go there and do the business. So for me, like I said, something might not happen for six months to a year in boxing. That's a very long time. That's a year I haven't boxed. So now the time is here. I think this is this is where it's turning. This is where the table is turning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jim stuck by you and everyone stuck by it by you, haven't they? Hundred percent, hundred percent. And obviously it hasn't been easy, but mm-hmm. it's good to have people like Jim sticking by me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And also, people don't stick by you that really you know, if they didn't think, I'm not suggesting it's the only reason, but listen, they know that you're a talent. They know it was about timing. And mm-hmm. it sounds like this is your time. Uh, so, Chris, yeah, I mean, 
I don't think I'll be allowed to come and, you know, uh, watch or whatever. I'll have to watch it on the telly because I think it's yeah. going to be quite a closed uh, event, isn't it? Super closed. Yeah, closed. Yeah, closed. So, closed. Everything will be behind closed doors for now. Yeah. But, yeah, just keep working. It's not long now. And, yeah, keep me posted with everything that's uh, going on. But, yeah, okay. thanks ever so much for giving us your time. No problem, man. So I'll put some cool. clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. For the people them that are watching, look at them. Was that for the, all the girl them? Who's no, that? You know, I, I knew there weren't gonna be girls here, so only guys. But I don't it's know. Not... Like I said, like, like I said, I I just come here. I I went to the gym. I jumped in the shower. I had some good food, and I just come and sit by my laptop. You know? Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And also, it's hot. And actually, it isn't. There's, there is a girl in there as well. It's the first time I've kept the um, uh, the feed on, and there has been some girls. Okay. They're all going to come out the woodwork now, Chris. Uh, I'm not interested at the moment. So. Keep your eyes on the prize, my friends. Cool. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowbox UK, we'd love to see you. So please go ahead and subscribe now.